Okay, I think the recording has started. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, the idea we will be discussing today is hyperbolas, or but before that, we will just see basic of why, like, how the iso hyperbolas that we are discussing today come up naturally. Okay, sorry. Okay, is my screen black? Or is it okay? Is it nice? So, you have a triangle ABC and a random line. Okay. Let me call this line L, let's say. And I also add in the certain circle, but no apparent reason. Okay. Now, what happens if I take the isogonal conjugate of every point on this line? Anybody? It is what conjugate? Isogonal conjugate. Do will... you know what that is? No, I don't. I okay. Rectangular uh, No, no, not necessary. Can you repeat? Yeah, if I have a triangle ABC and a random line L, I'll take isogonal conjugate of every point on this line. For the person who does not know what an isogonal conjugate is, I'll explain it once. Oh, you didn't miss anything as such. Just explained why we are doing, why I am from OMCID and why this is being recorded, recorded and not streamed. Even then it's not a rectangular hyperbola necessarily. Okay. Anyway, so the person who was asking what size of the is okay. Let me just show you. You have a triangle ABC. Okay. And you have some point X. It can be outside as well, but for convenience inside. You have this angle, this angle. And this angle. So what I do is I construct a point Y such that this angle is equal to this angle. This angle is equal to this angle. And similarly, this angle is equal to this angle. Okay. Okay, got it. Like every angle is just reversed on the side. Reflect across angle by sector of each side. And this existence you can prove easily. Uh, if you want to do it, you can even say trick saver, for example. Okay. Okay. Okay, now let's get back to our main thing. Now the question is what happens if I take isogonal conjugate of every point on this line L? If you have guesses, please speak up. Even if you know, then that's also good. Then also you can say. Uh, a hyperbola passing intersecting circumcircle of ABC at two points. A random hyperbola. Uh, intersecting uh, this. Circle. Uh, passing through ABC, I think. Yes, it will be a circum hyperbola in this case. What if I. Uh, okay, let me. Can I not choose the line separately? Interesting. What if the line was here? Uh, sorry, what if the line was here? What if this was L? Is it still a hyperbola? No, I ellipse it. Good. Okay. Why are we getting conics anyway? Is a good question to ask. Maybe we can take projective transformations or consider cross tracers on them. No the need for a projective transformation uh, or anything. And but... Barry centric, no. Like, no, no. Uh... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, no, please, no. You just need to prove that it's a conic. 
what's the most important thing that you know or the simplest thing that you know to degree okay no uh, how do we can define a conic if you have to uh, four points a b c d then you can define a conic p with as the locus of point p such that the cross ratio p a p b p p c p d is a constant locus of such points p passes through a b c d and is a constant okay okay this, this is how conic can be defined proving this is not so bad and that you can do it later but this is the important part so we'll use this property and you all know that conics are determined by five points right any five points determine a conic yeah okay good so let me in fact go ahead and take four random points here w x y c so now w x y is c is equal to a w a x a y a z correct yes but because the, the isogonal conjugate such as reflections across the line it's also a w prime a x prime a y prime a z prime correct mm. Correct. Right, because I just flipped across the line, so the cross ratios won't change, no? Like, yeah. That, that's a simple transformation. But then, since this was just W, X, Y, Z, this is also B, W prime, B, X prime, B, Y prime, B, Z prime. And it's also similarly C W prime, C X prime. Sorry, C Y prime, C Z prime. Correct. So we get that A B C W prime X prime. Y prime, Z prime, or line upon it. But this conic can be simply de de determined by A, B, C, W prime, X prime. So you can vary Y prime or Z prime arbitrarily on the line, and that will cover all the isogonal conjugates. So everything will lie on the conic made by A, B, C, W prime, X prime. But this logic would also give that A, B, C, W, X, Y, Z, all, all lie on a conic. This exact logic would give that. The point then you have to notice is that the fact that all four of these are collinear right now. The collinear, collinearity thing does not stay true when you take the isogonal conjugates. And why exactly? Again, those are just very simple details. I I mean, you can figure that it's well known and it's not. What, what is the problem with collinear? Ah, then you cannot you say the logic that they all lie on a conic. The only you can say they lie on a conic, but then they'll all have like these four will have to be on the straight line. So it will end up implying that all like the conic is just a straight line. And all. But ABC don't lie on the straight line. Yes, then ABC don't need to lie on the straight line. That will be the only issue. 
but that's fine. You're basically saying the isogonal conjugate of complete straight line is another straight line, which is just not possible, which is easy to do. Okay. Now, th that was not the important part. This is very interesting. Because we just proved that it turns like a isogonal conjugate of a random line is a circumconic. Now, how do you define, like, which conic is it? Is the next simplest question. When is it a parabola? When is it a circle? When is it a hyperbola? When is it an ellipse? It consider like if it if it is intersect a circumcircle at two points, it's a hyperbola. One point, then like tangent, then parabola. Otherwise, ellipse. Very good. Very good. When is it a circle? Like line at infinity. Very good. Okay. So the important thing to notice is uh, when a line intersects the circle, like any point on the circle. If you take the isogonal conjugate of a point on the circle, it goes to the point at it goes to a point at infinity. You can easily check that. I'll like this angle is let's say theta, and this is let's say alpha. If I draw alpha this way, and if I draw theta this way. I just want to prove these two lines are parallel, which is easy enough to do. Okay. Now comes the interesting thing. What let's take special cases of this line. We have put okay, does everyone understand when it's an ellipse and all? Can you repeat that once? Okay. So we proved like a point on the circle goes to a point at infinity. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. When you take isogonal conjugate. Now, if a line intersects the circle twice, then it has two points at infinity, the conic. Hmm. So it must be a hyperbola. Yeah. If it's tangent, then it has one point at infinity. So it must be a parabola. And if it's not intersecting at all, then it must be an ellipse or a circle. But if it's a circle, then it has to be the circumcircle, and the circumcircle it comes only from the line at infinity. So otherwise, it's a, otherwise it's an ellipse. Got it. Good for everyone. Can you please tell like how it is a hyperbola in the two points at case, and like how it is parabola? Two points at infinity is just a hyper. Like you can just see, ellipse has no points at infinity. Parabola has one point at infinity. Hyperbolas have two points at infinity. That's just like there's nothing much for that in Okay, so like you had defined points at infinity before, but then like it was not very clear. Like I mean, uh, like if you think like just angle-wise, intuitively, it seems like there would be four points at infinity for a hyperbola, and like two oh, points. But like both, like the two, there's exactly one asymptote, right? There are exactly two asymptotes. Sorry. Oh no, yes, you said the direction doesn't matter. Okay. Like backward and forward does not matter, no? It's oh. just that is one point at infinity along that line. Okay. Along both asymptotes, you have one point at infinity. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Now we have a more special interesting case, the one I want to look at today and talk about today. Uh, the one this talk is focused on. When this random line that we were talking about passes through the circumcenter. Can anyone tell what happens then? And why it could possibly be nice? The line is passing through? Circumcenter. The hyperbola passes, passes through orthocenter. Good. What is? Yeah, maybe the uh, uh, the parabola, the high, uh, what, the hyperbola will have perpendicular asymptotes. Perfect. Why? Uh, like uh, the two points of intersection would be antipodes, uh, so it's angle chase. Just good, very good. So 
the hyperbola has this angle as 90 right currently but since these two points go to points at infinity the like the asymptote will be parallel to like the isogonal conjugate of this line wherever that is like this what is and the same, asymptote i mean you have, you have to have like this line that's like close to tangent hmm. Okay, it's arbitrary close and all, but fine. And like that's just okay. So yes, as Arjun was saying, that this angle is ninety. So when you switch it, like this line becomes parallel to one of the asymptotes. And similarly, when you switch this, uh, this goes somewhere here. This becomes parallel to the other asymptote. So this is ninety. So the asymptotes are perpendicular. Good. Since this angle was ninety, this angle is also ninety. This angle was ninety because these two are antipodes. Is it fine? This is yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. Okay. Now that this is very good. So we have. What's called certain rectangular hyperbolas because they are rectangular hyperbolas. Rectangular hyperbola is just when asymptotes are perpendicular, and they are certain hyperbolas. So certain rectangular hyperbolas. Okay, it seems like someone said. Does everyone follow till now? Yes. Okay. Now these hyperbolas that we just defined are very amazing. Having such nice properties, let's look at some of them. Uh, Arjun, you talk a lot about the Poncelle point, right? Yeah, I talked yesterday. Do you, do you know the relation of them with uh, hyperbolas? Uh, no. Okay. The Poncelle points actually come up from hyperbolas. So A B C is your triangle, okay? Oh right. So we just proved that uh, for a hy hyperbola to be uh, rectangular, it must pass through H as well, right? Like just an immediate corollary. Yeah. So the hyperbola passes through H. So as well. Now let's say it was passing through another point P, where P is any arbitrary point in the plane, because we could have taken P dash and O P dash as the line. Okay. Okay, so now this is a, a circumrectangular hyperbola. Now we know that it passes through uh, edge of ABC, so it must also pass through at the center of PBC because it's a circumrectangular hyperbola of PBC as well. Can you repeat? We know it passes through like it's a circumrectangular hyperbola only and only if it passes through ortho center. Correct? Uh, I'm not sure. Can you repeat? It's a circumrectangular hyperbola if and only if it passes through ABC and H. Correct? Yeah. So if it passes through P, then it also passes through. Uh, ortho center of PBC. Yeah, got it. And ortho center of APC. And ortho center of APV. Oh, but the isogonal conjugation is done with respect to ABC, and that's why it passes through ortho center of ABC. But the isogonal conjugation is not done with this to with respect to PBC. So does not matter. I, I mean, you can go in reverse way also, right? If you have a circumrectangular hyperbola, you can take its isogonal conjugate back. You have to get a line through O. Oh yeah, right. You can go in the reverse direction as well. That's just fine. Got it. Okay, brilliant. Now we have it passes through ortho center of these as well. Now let's look at an interesting thing. Let's say this was the circumcircle of A, B, C, and hyperbola passes. 
intersects this circle at p prime okay now it passes through uh, center of ortho center of p prime b c as well which is yeah. p prime uh, what is p and p prime p is arbitrary point on the hyperbola p prime is in hyperbola intersection so from circle jp c so it passes through p prime h now we know a h p prime h prime is a parallelogram yeah because like a and p are points on the circle b c are fixed a h perpendicular b c p h p prime h prime perpendicular b c p prime h prime equal a h equal to or cos whatever you want so these two are equal and so this is a parallelogram because they are also now if there's a hyperbola like if anyone remembers if there are two parallel lines on a conic then the center of the conic if not the circle is like just the intersection like if you have a parallelogram on a conic then like it's just the if you have a parallelogram on the conic then the center of the conic is just the intersection of the diagonals of the parallelogram this is a well fact so is this easy to prove or tough oh very 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 easy you get h prime or the center of b prime c prime b c prime b p prime c okay so it also passes the center of this hyperbola is the midpoint of h p prime correct yeah that is q so q lies on the 9 point center 9 point circle sorry because it's midpoint half ratio from h of circle yeah. so the center of the hyperbola lies on the 9 point circle of abc oh first set point seems coming so because this is the center it must also lie on 9 point center of now 9 point circle of pbc pab and bac so the nine point circle is in fact concur at a point and that's the point the point okay so is that fine so this means that as p moves on the hyperbola constant point will be same yes oh so is this true for in any conic uh what do you mean uh, like uh, any like suppose this circum hyperbola would instead be some uh, ellipse then is the result still true uh i i mean if a line passes through o it can it has to intersect the circle twice so it has to be a hyperbola okay it cannot be any other conic anyway thanks for everyone So can we also say the converse that uh, the locus of all point space is that A B C P has same constant point is a hyperbola? Yes. Yes, yes. I mean, it's just the center of the hyperbola, right? So if it was a different point and you have the same center and it passes through A B C H, that means it's the same hyperbola. But I think there is not a unique hyperbola passing through A B C and P. it also it passes through is important oh yeah right got it oh q lies on 9 point circle of h triangle abc no because we are taking half homothetic from h of some circle it's midpoint of hp prime p prime is a point of yeah okay okay now we look at more magic results let me erase all this oh i should not erase maybe you want to look i'll make a new diagram okay seems like i cannot go back for some reason but okay now let's see okay why is this switching okay we are okay cool now you have abc 
look is weird. And you have a random point P. Prove that this is the following is called the fundamental theorem of circumrectangular hyperbolas. Uh, I'll skip it actually for you. Not here. Okay. So if you take the pedal circle, Okay, how to take circles. If you draw a pedal circle, then the Ponsley point also lies on it of ABCD. Okay, I should make a better diagram. Actually, I have a diagram. Oh, what is a constant point, by the way? I mean, we just different. If you don't follow at any point, you should ask me questions. Then, no, I've mentioned the constant point five times at this point. You shouldn't ask me questions ten minutes later. I mean, I've never said don't ask questions, but like ask timely, please. Okay, so this is our current figure. So ABC triangle, P is a point. You draw its feet of perpendiculars, D, E, and F. You draw a circle D, E, F. Prove that it passes through the Poncelet point of ABC, P, which is O. Okay, can anyone do it? I think this was just angle case. Good. Then how? Um, uh, let me do it. Um, uh, well, where is the Ponsley point? Oh. Oh, O is the Ponsley point. Like this is the hyperbola, right? Mm-hmm. A H P C. So basically, let the midpoint of PB be like uh, whatever you want to say. It. Say B naught. Uh, let's do it with A. If we have already defined L. Oh, so L is the midpoint of uh, uh, AP. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what we'll prove is that angle FOE is equal to angle FDE with directed angles or whatever. But okay. uh, uh, we can write angle FOE as angle FOL plus angle LOE and uh, it's almost just done like uh, now we know angle FOL and uh, now we can compute angle FOL easily okay. and angle LOE easily. Okay, good. Uh, did everyone understand what he said? No. Okay. So he said to prove that F, O, D, E are cyclic, what we'll just do is We'll prove that this angle is this angle. How do you do that? You first say FOE is FOL plus LOE. Okay. Now FOL okay. is FML because of the nine point circle claim that we just showed that O lies on the nine point circle and LFM is. LFMO, LFM is just a nine point circle of APB. Yeah. So FOL is FML, now homo 32 from A. You get that it's ABP, which is FBP. FBP is FDP.
so similarly l o e becomes p d e so f o e becomes f d e okay yeah. mm, okay got it everyone Okay. okay. Can you show the theorem once again for a second? The fundamental theorem. Okay. No. How did you know? How did you understand the angle change if you don't? Oh, like I have to note it down. I don't remember in the words. Like, this is the constant point. That oh, I I got that. Is it visible? It is. Oh, yeah. Okay, looks good. Now we have a few things out of there. I'll give you another result. You just showed that X lies on, like, sorry, O lies on the pedal circle, right? It also lies on the CVM circle. Does anyone know what the CVM circle is? Uh, if we join AP and extend it to meet BC at D and similarly define DEF, then that circle, I guess, circle DEF. Yes. Good. This is a little draw. Ponsley point will lie on it as well. You may have seen this result in multiple forms that nine point circle, CBN circle, and petal circle all concur. This that is also a well known result. But this is interesting. How to prove this? How to prove this? Actually, okay, I don't want to spoil it for you. This is a very nice result. I want you to try it on your own. And this has like many magic proofs as well. You can do normal proof as well, but there, there are a couple of magical proofs. So I want you to try it on your own. I, you can, for hint, you can check in my handout. And otherwise, I can send the proof to you if you do not, if you are not able to prove it till tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Now, could you send your handout on Discord also? It's just available on the link I've shared. All my handouts are there. I'll put it on a uh, drive as well if you want. Which link? Uh, just somebody. Okay, let me actually check. I have put it here. No. Yeah, you can see the handout cell. There's nothing else on there. Just my handouts. If it's like a public link. Okay. Now that we have a couple of nice results, I think now you'll try to at least see some of why this is interesting. Right? I hope you see a little bit of why this is interesting. Okay, so you must have noticed something from our previous result. That if you look here, this circle, our uh, pedal circle, is in, intersects the nine point circle at two points, right? Our pedal circle will intersect the nine point circle at two points. Yes. So if O is the Ponsley point of T, what is the other intersection the Ponsley point of? A, B, C, and 
the isogonal conjugate of p good very good p prime because this p and t prime we know to share the same circle i didn't get uh, the thing we know that p and t prime share the same pedal circle right yeah so <laughs> P was intersecting if this if this circle was intersecting twice, then it has the other Poncelet point has to be from P prime. Oh yeah. And but can it happen that P and P P prime have the same Poncelet point? That is a special case when it's tangent, and that you have to. And so when will that happen? When O P and P prime are collinear. Can that happen? When P is the in center, then its isogonal conjugate is itself. Brilliant. Very good. Very good. So what is this? Uh, the circumcenter or the center? Yes, that is also. But in that case, the circle is the same. So it does not really change Hi. much. It does not. It is a, also a very interesting case when the line is the other line. I didn't it, get why P O P prime are collinear if and only if P equal I in center. In fact, for P equal to O and H, the result is true and. No, no, I didn't say only. I didn't say only. I just said okay, that's an interesting case. Oh. So what does that prove? That like I is isogonal conjugate is itself in a sense. Okay, have you guys heard of the Feuerbach point? Yeah. Okay, what is the pedal circle of I? Uh, can you please tell the Feuerbach point? I haven't. Okay, it's just the center of the hyperbola passing through ABCH. Oh, okay. Pedal circle of I is just in circle. Okay, so in circle intersection nine point circle should be the Poncelet point. Which is in this case the Feuerbach point? Yeah. So? Yeah, yeah, they are tangent. So they are tangent. Very good. Because there's no other intersection, there's no second intersection. I right? still didn't get why the, there is no second intersection. If there's a second intersection, it must have been from the isogonal conjugate, no? It is also a Poncelet point or something. Like you can no. reverse engineer and draw a figure. You can like take Homo 32 from H, and you can get a point, and you can draw the hyperbola passing through it with this as the center. And you can reverse engineer the whole thing and construct and see what point it was the Poncelet point of, and draw the line, and then you get the argument. Okay. Okay. Okay, brilliant. What else can we do? Let's look at a few problems actually. Uh, are you guys familiar with the isogonality lemma? Yeah. Okay. By the way, the claim I was making right now, uh, if like O, P, and P prime are collinear. If petal circle and NPC tangent this is called the third Fontaine theorem. There's some accent I'm probably messing it up, I'll check. And it's one of the exercises that you have to do. Okay, try to prove this result rigorously. Okay. 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 
the three there are three fontaine theorems all of which are interesting we'll look at the others also as well i think there might be a more but i'm not familiar with them at least okay Okay, now we'll look at a certain special point called the antigonal conjugate. How much time do I have? Can I extend? Can I take fifteen more minutes? Like, till, I think we started late. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Antigonal conjugate. A B C triangle, B random point, H or center. Okay, I have to go now. Except someone. Okay. Just and okay. Yeah. So, does anyone know how the antigonal conjugate is defined? No. Okay. I'll snip it again. Paste it so you can see while I speak. Also, I will have a reference. So, say the Ponsley point was uh, x. So, a reflection of x, p in x, q is called the antigonal conjugate. Okay, sorry, that was weird. yeah so first property is angle ppc is minus pqc can anyone see this oh, what did you just say i defined the antigonal conjugate of the point i asked you to prove that angle ppc is minus pqc directed angles are basically saying if this is if it looked like this ppc plus bqc is 180 if it looked like this but like otherwise you can for a general conflict directed angles is better of course oh can you just tell what is antigonal conjugate I just defined it. No reflection of P over one point A B C P. Oh, okay. One step point at the center of the hypothesis. I think we should consider a homotety at P with a scale half. Okay. What does that help us? Uh, like points B and C go to midpoint of P B P C Q goes to the uh, Ponsley point, and we know much more about them. Actually, you don't need all this. You are very close, and we have like you can do much more already. Yeah, I think we are just done by homotety at uh, which scale uh, half. Okay, how about we just like uh, uh, mark the midpoint of PB and PC as a B naught and C naught, and the midpoint of BC as A naught. A prime. Of, sorry, midpoint of BC as A prime. Yeah. Okay. And PB and PC as B naught C naught. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, let the Ponsley point be uh, P prime. Then angle B, B prime, P prime, C prime is just uh, uh, measured angle B prime, uh, A prime, C prime, which is just equal to minus of angle B, P, C because of parallelogram. Okay. Yeah, this, yeah, I think that works. So, what I had in mind was uh, if you take what the center of B, P, C, 
then let's say h prime we know we like p uh, h prime is also on the hyperbola so also since like remember how we prove that x lies on pc so uh, p like this q will also lie on the circle of p and c so b q c is just a b and c which defines p p c p h prime c okay this is what i had in mind what you did is correct to pause could you wait for just one minute let me think on this too q lies on what circle uh, q lies on uh, circle b h prime c where h prime is ortho center of p p c just reverse engineer the proof and regard regard for x like i remember how we showed x on nine points so i got it now like a, a q was the uh, midpoint of a h prime right uh, q is midpoint of a h prime okay like in, you know x lies on nine point circle of bpc right which point x lies on nine point circle of bpc yeah x, so like nine point circle of bpc is just nine point circle of ph prime c correct hmm so nine if you take homotopy 2 from p of x it should go on circle, circle of ph prime c because p is the ortho center of ph prime c. oh yeah got it so q lies on circle circle of ph prime c so pqc is ph prime c which is minus bpc Sounds good to everyone. Uh, you need to say yes. Okay. Now let's look at uh, the second part. Prove that the isogonal conjugates of P and Q are inverses of each other in A, B, C. How to do this now? Actually, I'll leave this as an exercise. Okay. Yeah, you should try it on. Let's look at second Fontaine theorem once, and I think after that we can end as well. Sounds good. Sounds good. Good. The responsiveness is nice. Uh, how do I snip? Take it as uh, and large. Does everyone just? I know every like anyone who's comfortable with what we have done till now should know what this means. I think we proved that this is true. Hey. P varies on a hype. Okay. Yes. Hyperbola, okay. but uh, this is written line. Yes, which is different. Uh huh. Yeah, but why? So this theorem is right, so, right? Yeah, it it's correct. Is it the confident point of P? The point? No. Oh, it's not the first point. The one. Oh, I guess we have to consider isogonal conjugate of P, and we have to consider other intersection point. Good. So consider isogonal conjugate of P prime P, which is P prime. Now P prime varies on the hyperbola as P varies on the line. But P and P prime share the same pedal circles. We know this by six point circle. So, but pedal circle of P passes through the is the passes is the pedal circle of P prime. But pedal circle of P prime passes through the Poncelet point of P prime. But the Poncelet point of P prime is fixed, just dependent on this line. 
page passes to home. Okay, because it's the center of the hyperbola. At the point, the point we know is on the nine print circle of ABC. Cool result, no? And how easy to prove it, it was for us because of the theory we have developed. Otherwise, how would you even approach this directly if you have not seen this before? But you'll try some fancy angles or whatever. So cool, so simple. Is this clear? Yes. Uh, anybody else has any issues? I'll, okay, I think I have nothing much to add, but for all of you, you should look at the handout. There are many nice problems in there. You you will enjoy them a lot if you enjoyed the lecture or like the results we had. There are many fascinating results, none of which is the first fontaine. Main is the main, I think, is the first fontaine and its corollaries. You can look at these, these are very nice. These are in the handout. Since okay, I think you notice that I'm just clipping things from there, and of course, we have our favorite hyperbola, the feedback hyperbola. What did you say about hyperbola? We have our favorite hyperbola, the feedback hyperbola, which again is very nice. And has many nice properties. So, so uh, you can look in the handout and you'll find many nice problems and properties. Like the feedback hyperbola, so cool. Passes through A, B, C, I, H, Mitten, Bohm, Nagel, Schiffler, and of course, is centered at the feedback point. So, have you also given hint for these problem at the end? I have not, I have not, but like none of these are very hard except one or two in the end, uh, which you can. I can share the links for because explaining the proof will be hard for me as well. I can share the AOPS links for them. So all these problems have some AOPS link. The first few are like, uh, like there are two hard problems at the end, or relatively hard problems. Those two I can share the link for. If others you should just be able to solve if everything today was clear. Okay. Thanks for the class. Oh, oh, somebody said no, no. What was the issue? What did they reply? Oh, I think you asked oh, oh, any issues. No, I meant I understood. Ah, 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 okay. When do we have our next class? I think at five with Sudhani. Okay. Yeah, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed. So right. is, is this uh, used sometimes maybe in Olympiad geometry question? Or just for fun, it's a I mean, the problems that you looked at, like, and like a point which is a line through O, and then it's pedal circle passes through a fixed point, on, and come, passes through a fixed point of the nine point circle. That's not a very hard, that's a very, very Olympiad statement, no? Yeah. If it's statement structure. Or the point, the point is that NPC is conquer. Is a very Olympiad statement. Also, for the thing on the hand, it's, some, it's just a glove that came with the anti tablet. Apparently, it's supposed to prevent sweat and other things from going onto the tablet or like the stuff on your hand. <laughs>